Now that we have separately studied n-type and p-type semiconductors, it is time to join a piece of p-type semiconductor to an n-type semiconductor such that the crystal structure remains continuous at the boundary. The contact surface is called the p-n junction. p-n junction is of great importance as it is the control element for solid-state devices. It is also called a semiconductor diode PN junction diode or simply a crystal diode. It is very important for an electronics engineer to understand the behavior of a PN junction diode as a fundamental electronic device when it is used in an electric circuit. As soon as the PN junction is formed, the holes from the P side diffuse to the N region and combine with free electrons. The diffusion takes place because the concentration of holes in the P side is much higher than the concentration of holes in the N side. Also free electrons from the N region diffuse to the P region where they combine with the holes. The diffusion of electrons is also happened due to the difference of electrons concentration in the N and P regions. The diffusion of electrons and holes across the junction and recombination of electrons and holes takes place for a short time. Because as a result of the displacement of the charges, an electric field appears across the junction. When this internal field becomes large enough, it restrains the process of diffusion. Due to the recombination of electrons and holes around the junction, the region around the PN junction is completely ionized. As a result, there will be no free electrons in the N side nor any holes on the P side. Since the region around the junction is depleted of electrons and holes, it is called the depletion region. It is also called the space charge region or the transition region. Now let's take a look at different graphs which describe characteristics of the PN junction. The first graph indicates the carrier concentration of the PN junction. As discussed earlier, in the P side, majority carriers are holes and minority carriers are electrons. So the concentration of holes in the P side, which is shown by P subscript P is Na. The subscript P indicates the type of the semiconductor. In this case, it is P type. In the P side, electrons are minority carriers, so their concentration is indicated by N subscript P0. P indicates the type of semiconductor and zero means the semiconductor is in thermal equilibrium which means the temperature is constant and no extra energy is applied to the semiconductor. Here I used subscript zero only for minority carriers because as you remember from previous sections of the course, the concentration of minority carriers highly depends on temperature. For majority carriers, the concentration highly depends on doping and the changes of temperature doesn't have a great effect on majority carriers. For the N side, I use subscript N. So in the N side, the concentration of electrons is ND which depends on the donor atoms and the concentration of holes is indicated by P subscript N0. If I indicate the concentration of electrons and holes inside the depletion region in logarithmic scale, it would be like this. However, by using the linear scale, we can see that the concentration of majority carriers quickly drops in the depleted region. This is what we expected, since due to recombination, this region is depleted of free charge carriers. In the second graph, you can see the space charge density. If you assume that X is equal to zero at the middle of the PN junction, equal amounts of charge exist on both sides. So QNAXP equals QNDXN. By using this equation, you can find that if you have unequal doping, or let's say if the concentration of added acceptors NA is different from the concentration of added donors ND, then the width of the depletion layer will not be the same on the two sides. So to uncover the same amount of charge, the depletion layer will extend deeper into the more lightly doped material. In other words, for example, if the concentration of acceptors decreases, XP or depletion layer on the P side will increase. If the concentration of donors increases, XN will decrease. In the next video, I will find mathematical relations for Xn and Xp and you'll better understand how distances Xn and Xp change with the change of doping concentration.
To calculate internal electric field in the depletion region, we can use Poisson's equation, which is derived from Gauss's law. So dE over dx is approximately equal to rho, which is the space charge density divided by epsilon. Here I use approximation, because as you saw in the first graph, the concentration of majority carriers Na and Nd does not suddenly drop in the depletion region. But we imagined that no free space charge is available in the depletion region. This is the approximation I've made. In reality, a few amounts of charge carriers available in the depletion region. So by using Poisson's equation, we would be able to illustrate the electric field inside the depletion region. This field is zero outside the depletion region. The last graph I intend to show you in this video is the voltage created by the depletion region. This is known as the junction built-in voltage or the potential barrier voltage. To find the built-in voltage, I can integrate the equation for electric field from minus xp to xn. As the name implies, this is a built-in voltage which is created by the PN junction itself with the absence of any external source.